Philip, uh, where are we at with banking nine years after the crisis? Nine years after the crisis, have the regulators made a safer world? And is this connected with the ongoing problems about banking profitability, the unsaleability of RBS and all the rest of it? Well, one thing for sure, Carol, it's taking a very long time to work through the problems that first emerged in 2008. And we're talking really about two separate issues. One is the financial losses that that banking crisis called, which is caused, which is leaving a big hole in balance sheets and profit and loss accounts. And then the second thing is the, the restitution that banks are having to make for the malpractice, the misconduct that emerged as a result of the crisis. I'm talking about LIBOR, PPI, mis-selling mortgage securities, all of those other things. So the combination of the two, the, the, the holes in the balance sheet and the fines for misconduct, are indeed leading to a sort of quite a pressured situation for UK banks. Is it therefore the case that they will finally work through these problems and move on to the sunlit uplands? <laughs> Is there a recovery of profitability there? Or has increased regulation meant that the days of 15 to 20% return on capital are gone forever? Two separate questions. I think we are really now at the, at the, at the beginning of the end. Um, 2017, I think, will be the last year, perhaps 2018, the very last year when you see these really heavy misconduct costs. So that, that should start to ease away. And banks will be able to display the underlying profitability of their business. They already do it, of course. They now publish two sets of figures, the official figures and what they call adjusted figures. That's with all the nasty stuff swept away. So that, that I think, we're, we're getting towards that stage now. 2017 might well be the last year. Will they go back to 15 20% return on equity? Probably not. I think that the requirement to on banks to hold more capital the era of low interest rates, which makes it harder for banks to make money. I think that's going to mean that 15, 20% is, is probably too high. But they'll still be able to generate a significant real return as a result of their, of their businesses. Even with low interest rates, even with the other adverse requirements like increased capital, mm -hmm. is this still a business that's suitable for a PLC looking for returns in the teens? provided that the PLC is not too ambitious. Returns in the teens, I think, are, are, are a long, long way out. Um, I think you know, returns of 9%, 10%, maybe 7 8%, perfectly acceptable for a, a simple, well-run business, comfortably ahead of the rate of inflation, ahead of the, co of the cost of capital. That's the kind of area that I would like to see responsible, well-run banks aiming for. There's no need for any fancy stuff. Keep it simple. So one of your messages is cut back on the ambition, cut back on the aggression, because that's producing risk. And that's, of course, one of the themes in your new forthcoming book on Barclays. Ambition in banking is a really dangerous thing. The only way that you can really grow profits in banking, the way you can grow revenue, is to take on more risk. To, take, to, to grow your business, you have to lower credit standards. Once you start lowering credit standards, it becomes a much riskier business. It's just not really worth it. Much better, I feel, to let the business grow at a, at a natural pace, to grow within the capability of management to manage it, within the capability of shareholders to understand it and within the capability of regulators to regulate it. That's all we need. So the monster banks like RBS with balance sheets several times the size of GDP or whatever, in your view, those are a thing of the past and so they should remain in the past. For the UK, I think that's right. Um, the US is slightly different. The Americans have got the, the, uh, the great advantage of a large profitable, highly profitable um, domestic market. And that, I think, gives them a solid earnings base, a solid business base, which enables them to be a little more adventurous. They also have um, a much stronger culture of uh, management discipline in financial services. In the UK, we've been trying to learn it really very quickly. Too much, too soon, too fast, we fell over. Interesting that you say there that the American domestic market is profitable. Mm -hmm. The UK market, of course, is chronically unprofitable, partly because of free current accounts and all the rest of that. And that's another one of your themes, isn't it, Philip, that this is 
to give away the core product is foolish and it's no basis for a business model. Well, it's, you know, it's quite interesting. The perception is that, that UK retail banking is unprofitable. That's, that's the most common perception one has amongst certainly the public and, and amongst some, some commentators. Actually, if you look really hard at the numbers and if you strip away the misconduct costs that they keep on incurring, core banking in the UK, free if in credit banking, is actually a profitable profitable business for the UK banks. They do it, of course, by um, charging uh, for unauthorised overdrafts an absolute fortune. And in a sense, they, they are charging the poor to subsidise the rich. And that does trouble me. There is something I don't like about this free if in credit banking model. If we look at the idea of a core retail business being profitable, why don't the challenger banks work? Effectively, because they are up against massive vested interests, the, the, the big four or five banks have an 80% market share. Customers are frightened to switch because they're worried that something will go wrong. It's hard for customers to unbundle the true price that they're paying. It's a very complex business model. It's, an, it's, a, it's a good old-fashioned oligop oligopoly. If it looks like an oligopoly, sounds like an oligopoly, speaks like an oligopoly, then it's probably an oligopoly. Thank you very much. Absolutely my pleasure, Carol.